the 12 rules to live by on testosterone. Rule number eight, fertility and testicular atrophy. This is such an important topic as the reality is when men are on androgens, it's going to affect their testicles. So we see in the world now over the last 10 years that we have tens and tens of millions of young men that have been diagnosed with hypogonadism requiring different modalities of testosterone to be treated. And however, there is a significant risk for these young men that are otherwise fertile and desire fertility of impairments of spermatogenesis. It's called azospermia, having no sperm at all in your ejaculate, and which means you're completely infertile. And that infertility can be for life, especially if you're on testosterone. It's a birth control agent. And so many men don't really understand this, especially the spectrum of men that are starting steroids, young men, steroids and antigens, all the way through to even men that visit their doctors, good doctors, and they start them on, on testosterone. And maybe they're in their 20s, late 20s, even into their 30s and 40s, and they're going to want to have more children or a child. And there's going to be a problem. I could tell you that because this is one of the top most important things that I deal with medically every day right here in this clinic. This is my office clinic here. So we have to understand the mechanism of action it's going to be the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. You guys, so many of you guys, I'm so impressed with you. you know so much about this. This goes back, you know, 10 to 15 years at least when I realized that men came in knowing so much more than doctors, quote unquote, about what will happen when they use exogenous androgens on that hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. There are millions and millions of men around the world that are experimenting with these agents, exogenous androgens, steroids, prohormones, SARMs, and even testosterone boosters. All these things are going to have some collective effect on your hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis. And there is potential for acute, not to mention chronic issues with fertility. A question I get all the time is, doctor, when I'm on steroids and I understand I'll get shut down after using steroids or even testosterone, how, how long will this take? What, what does it look like? And when will I resolve in fertility? We have to understand that we've seen this for decades. Of course, we see many bodybuilders, professional famous bodybuilders, who have many children. They have many children. What, what's going on with this? Hey guys, quick pause here. If you're watching this video, odds are you're concerned about your testosterone levels. That's where the sponsor of this video comes in. Let'sgetchecked.com. Let's Get Checked makes professional health testing easy by letting you get tested without having to visit a healthcare provider. Choose your test online, like one of their testosterone panels, and it will be delivered to you in discreet packaging with next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in a laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure online account within two to five days. See my link in the description for more details and discount code. We see many bodybuilders, professional famous bodybuilders, who have many children. They have many children. What, what's going on with this? We do know that when men are young and healthy, they can go on and off steroids, and it just takes one sperm out of millions, right? 
So, of course, I see the sad complications of this all the time. But in terms of medical issues, it's really gambling. Most men, when they're young, when they come off steroids for even just a matter of six weeks or two or three months, they will achieve fertility and they'll get someone pregnant, sometimes something they don't want, they didn't want to do. And then, of course, you know the drugs that are used, HCG and Clomid, of course, and I'm going to talk about that stuff in detail today, so stay tuned. This truly is one of the most important and most common medical issues I work on every day, infertility with men on androgens. Let's use some real clinical scenarios to elucidate exactly what kind of man that I see and probably who you are, you're going to fall into one of these classifications. So the first man is a young man using anabolic steroids, on and off steroids, from newbies to guys that are kind of blasting and cruising. They're more mature users and they want to achieve fertility. Now, how do you assess these men? And this is, again, this is recommendations and information educationally for doctors here too, for so many doctors that follow me. And I'm, of course, working on more and more research right now. So thank you so much and stay tuned. We have two peer-reviewed medical journal articles today. You could see them on my website, Testosteronology, and we're working on more. Always working on more research. Evidence-based research in medicine is the only way a physician can be respected in my opinion. So when you're doing the history and physical and you're evaluating and taking this man in, then I've taken care of thousands and I love the trust. I love that bond between myself and you guys, that you trust me. First off, the history of the steroid details. What do you do, sir? What have you been doing? Anovar, Ment, Tren, Testosterone. What, have you done PCT? What do you think PCT is? The details, this is why physicians and healthcare providers, you have to become educated and understand androgens. The history in my channel here, learn about Nor-19 drugs and Trend and Decadurabolin and Decadec. Learn about testosterone esters and testosterone-based drugs. And, and of course, learn about DHT-derived drugs and understand the history going all the way back into the 1940s with this incredible history of androgens, not to mention other pets. So you have to also understand the detailed medical history of this man, this particular young man in front of you. And it has to be confidential, there has to be trust. What is his, his genetic background with a family history? What metabolic diseases does he have, if any? What, what, what does he have a psychiatric history? Is he on depression medicines or medicines for ADD or medicines for anxiety? Again, the family history is going to be so important. And this is the beginning of how you understand what to do for this one particular scenario of a young man who's on and off steroids and wants to be fertile. You're out there. You're listening. So this is for you. So the evidence-based support in which I've taken part in these, this research, of course, and I live this research every day for now 15 years with thousands and thousands of men that trust me, the data says there's three ways to go really with this. Stop the steroids, but you could suffer, of course, and you need to do some, uh, have some transitional medical recommendations. And wait, that's number, number one. Stop and wait, you'll recover. How long? V could be up to a year. You can never recover fertility. That's that anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadal aspect that I'm waiting, doctor, I'm waiting and waiting. I don't feel good. I did steroids. Did I cross the line? Am I coming back or not coming back? Number one. Number two is going to be utilizing drugs, HCG. These are really medical grade, which I'm going to talk about today in the next part. HCG and, and, and Clomid. So using those. But is it PCT that you think you're going to use PCT, you're hitting a reset button and you're going to be fine? It's the, it, the data shows it's not true. Using PCT works for fertility, hands down. You're, you're using analogs of LH and FSH or you're stimulating your brain with Clomid 
and even tamoxifen to some degree, but tamoxifen is really a serum for breast cancer. Clomid is a serum for fertility. I know you guys know this. You have to understand the mechanisms. And this is for the doctors. And of course they understand. Fertility doctors and endocrinologists, these guys, they know this stuff. When to use it, how to use it, for what patient category and candidate to use it on. That's what they don't know because they don't have the experience. So listen, pay attention. And number three in this case would be, would you switch a man to testosterone esters who's really suffering, who's young, and then he wants to be fertile. And that's going to flip over to the next part of my discussion when you talk about how do you get men fertile that are on testosterone, want to be on testosterone. This is very complicated, guys. I've laid this out very clearly here. So we don't use tamoxifen for this, again. And there's really no other drugs here for this. And I'm going to go into, in the end, about some of the dangers of PCT and how I see it from a research perspective in my clinical history. So that's that man, that young man that is using steroids and now wants to be fertile. Come off and wait and use these other ancillary drugs we said. That's the only thing they can do. And it works. It works great for most guys, not all. Next group is a young middle-aged man who's on TRT. He's on TRT, not stock. I'm not a steroid user, I'm on testosterone. Or who wants to be on TRT and he's not. So really focus on this, guys. I really put a lot into this, the layout, so it's super strict and it flows right through to you guys. Because these are discrete entities. In, in, in classifications of candidates and patients. So in this class of candidacy, there's two men. One is a man that has no prior use of steroids or TRT, completely a newbie, completely a virgin to androgens. And this is a man where you can start him from the get-go on HCG, 250 units up to maybe 400 a couple times a week. I'm giving you actionable, specific information here. 250 to 400, I think 400 is a little much. And this is, again, this is gonna be with testosterone replacement. We have data for this. And what are you at risk for? Side effects of estrogen, estrogen side effects, because when you're on testosterone, there's aromatization, depending on the man and how much. And I hear 24-7, believe me, guys. And then if you're adding HCG, you're just going to further aromatize more. So is it worth it? So this is the class of man that is a virgin to androgens, starting testosterone, not a steroid user, and he knows he's going to be on it indeed for life, wants to maintain fertility. Adding the HCG to that. I tell you guys all the time. I tell this all the time. But it's, it's so complicated, I think, for men to really grasp this because it's complex. It's, it's sub, these are subdivisions upon subdivisions and scenarios upon scenarios, and it's highly, it's, it's, ve it's very specific. So again, you're a newbie to, to being on testosterone, brand spanking new, so you haven't really used steroids. Can, from the big, your balls have never been affected really from it, but you have low T from metabolic or congenital or from prednisone, corticosteroids, or from drug addiction or from suboxone. Or from, it's for, from a lot of other things. This is really true. You have to do the history. And then you're starting TRT and the guy wants to make fertility, but he wants TRT, so you do those small concomitant doses. Again, it's not with Clomid. You don't use TRT and Clomid at the same time. You could do whatever you want in the streets. You don't do it here. I don't do it. It's, that's a mess. Can you do testosterone and small doses of HCG? You can! Most men don't. It's a lot of work, side effects, a lot of injections. You're traveling around the world, doc, I gotta, I gotta mix it, I gotta put it in, in the refrigerator bags on the plane. No, it's not illegal. TSA doesn't care. No one cares. You have a prescription. It's not even really a controlled drug. Some states are controlled drugs, some states it's not. We're talking HCG. Aromatization, down regulation, down regulation, down regulation. I could say it 10 times. You guys still ask me questions. Down regulation. These are LH analogs that are working directly on the serotonin and Leydig cells, increasing testosterone and theoretically maintaining some degree of spermatogenesis while you're on testosterone and you're being shut down. 
That's why Clomid's not going to work when you're living on testosterone, TRT, by blocking estrogenic receptors in the brain and trying to fool the system where you're going to increase the LH and FSH response out of the brain when you're on testosterone, it gets messy. But if you're going to just use testosterone, small doses, TRT, and use regular hits during the week of an LH analog, it can work. And this can also work for to limit testicular atrophy. So again, this is a very important piece here. That fertility piece and the atrophy of the, of the testicles go hand in hand. Next, we're talking now about a mature steroid user or a man who's been on testosterone or a man who uses testosterone intermittently. But again, not a newbie and not a virgin to androgens. This is a man that will use HCG for fertility on demand. This is the most common man I have, on demand, with or without Clomid. So 